going to therapy has allowed me to understand that my happiness is my choice and it's up to me and nobody else can make me happy. So when people say, mm. oh, well, you, you look so happy with Cynthia. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I was happy before Cynthia. Or when somebody says, oh, you made Cynthia so happy. No, I didn't make Cynthia happy. I make her happier. There he is. What's up, my brother? How you doing? How you doing? Good, good, good. How's everything? I'm blessed, man. I'm here. You know, ten toes down, bro. I'm happy to have ten you. Toes. <laughs> ten toes down. Every day's a blessing. I love it. I love yeah. it. I appreciate that. Um, well, for those who don't know, let me just quickly give you an intro. Uh, and if I miss anything, please let me know. But uh, sports correspondent, author, father, girl dad, like myself. <laughs> so yeah. I definitely want to talk about yes. that. Uh, Absolutely. Newly, newly wed. <laughs> yes. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to have all those titles. Uh, newlywed, husband, father, uh, author, sportscaster, and a child of God, man. You know, that's, child that's of God. the best title I can have. And just child of God, child of God. And there just you continue go. to walk this earth, man, trying to make it better. That's it. Happy I to hear that. Me. No, likewise, likewise. Look, there's a lot um, I want to dig into with you. You know, of course, you have the book out, Open Mic, which I love. And uh, one thing I do love, you know, some, some people may look at the cover of your book and, you know, bare chested, <laughs> bared at all. But I feel, yeah. but I feel yeah. like, you know, you could look at that at face value, but I honestly feel like you're being a, your vulnerable self. And I feel like you're opening yep. up, you know? Yes. And that's, it was symbolism. It, it had nothing to do with me trying to show off some gains or whatever, you know, but part of it actually was it showed the progress that I've made, but I don't have a perfect body. So it shows that I still have a way to go. But if I can sure. actually get the book cover here. So I got the book cover here. And the reason I wanted to have there it in black go. and white is because it's like I'm coming out of the shadows of my darkness and stepping into my mm. light. And I think, mm. like you said, when you're naked and you're in public, you're the most vulnerable that you can actually be. So I wanted to tell the naked truth in my book. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to be naked on the cover. The reason why I have, like, you know, obviously the microphone is what I do for Mike and all that type of stuff. But the ropes around me are the traumas and everything that kind of bound me for so long that uh, stunted my growth and didn't allow me to become the man that I'm trying to become today because I'm still stepping into my manhood. And then if you look at the back cover, you see it's a little lighter. Uh, you see my head is held a little higher because on the front, my head is bowed because I'm Damn. a little, I'm not... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not uh, proud of some of the things I've done in my past. But my head is up here. It's a little bit light. I'm stepping into the light a little bit more. And I got a woman who got my back. And she has her arms around me like the arms of God. And she's always constantly talking to my ear and giving me the advice that I need. So, you know, that's the symbolism that was involved behind the covers to uh, Open Mic. Shot by Eric Robinson, great photographer, by the way. <laughs> no, it looks that way. I love it. I love it. And I appreciate the symbolism. I, I, I felt I, I felt like there was something deeper. I was like, he's he's not yeah. just trying to flex. He didn't hit the gym. And <laughs> no. oh, man. And like I said, I, look, I don't I don't I don't have that kind of body to flex like that yet. You know what I mean? Maybe one day if I continue to stay in the gym, maybe I can do some little stir strap things, whatever they talking about on Instagram, or whatever. But not, not for the book, man. Not for the book. <laughs> yeah, no, I appreciate that. Um. So one of the things with, with you recently getting married, and I think you mentioned in an article with us exact, uh, actually on blacklove.com, you said you wouldn't have met and been able to marry Cynthia had, had you not gone through the journey you recently embarked on and were able to put yourself in a position to even to start writing about. I feel like writing is very, it's very personal. You know, so to, to even <laughs> write something that comprehensive about yourself and then put it out there to the world um, is very, you know, it, it's, it's very, uh, yeah, it puts you in a very vulnerable spot. So I think that in, in a way was probably almost therapeutic un, unto itself, it, would you say? It was needed. I, yeah, it was my therapy. It was my first form of therapy that I've ever received on a personal level was writing a book and I needed to write the book. I tell people all the time that had I not written open mic, I probably wouldn't be here today because I was living a facade, I was living a lie. Uh, the outward shell that you saw of Mike Hill 
you know, somebody that was always happy, trying to make everybody else happy, great job, living a life on the Instagram. You know how you pop on Instagram and flex on Instagram and whatnot. But on sure, the sure. inside, I'd come home at night, I'd be on the road when I was on with the teams uh, that I was covering, and I'd find myself crying all the time and wondering why. And mm. something told me I needed to write this book. And once I started writing the book, I was able to unload all those, all those things that I had suppressed for so many years, all these traumas that I didn't even realize existed. And I was able to get them out. So when I say, if it wasn't for this book, uh, I wouldn't be with Cynthia Bailey. I wouldn't be alive today, first and foremost. I really feel like I would have stroked out or had a heart attack or something like that because I didn't address wow. other things. But secondly, I would not have been ready for somebody like Cynthia Bailey, obviously because of some of the things I've done in my past with past relationships. So I could have met her. I could have dated her. It wouldn't have lasted. And even though I'm still walking into my manhood in my journey, and that's why when I wrote the article for uh, blacklove.com, uh, I said that God ain't done with me yet because mm. I'm still going through my therapy. I'm still going through my journey. You know, I, I've come to a point where I understand I need to walk into that manhood. But there are things that I still need to fix in my life and I'm still addressing and therapy is helping that. So what are so when when did you when did this come upon you to say I need I need to make a change? When when did you start to feel this and, and feel that impetus? I need to write these thoughts down. I need to go to I know you said therapy was the next step, so let me go to step one with even thinking, let me write a book about about myself and just open up on the things I've done wrong. Like what, what, what hit you? Well, well, like I said, it was, it was the, the feeling that I had on the inside. I, I thought about writing this book a long time ago. Uh, my friends and a lot of family members always say, you need to write a book. You need to write a book. You got an interesting story, interesting past. And I'm like, Who, who's going to read my book? You know, I, I'm not anybody. I'm like, I was on ESPN at the time or on Fox sports. And yeah, I was known in the sports world, but I'm like, why am I going to write a book? Who's going to help? Nobody's going to read it. And uh, but once again, uh, four years ago, it just hit me where it said I needed to write this book because I was crying. I was having this I was having this, this these issues on the inside of me, these emotions that I could not explain. Why am I crying so much? And I'm not even a crier. I'm not a person that showed that type of emotion. But that's the problem. It's like a lot of black men won't show that emotion. Mm -hmm. We hold it inside for so long until it becomes like a pressure cooker ready to bubble over. And for me, in 2017, that's when my pressure cooker started to, to boil over. And I, sure. I could feel some of my energy, my positive energy coming back. And I felt like, wow, this is the reason why this failed. This is the reason why I couldn't be a good man. This is the reason why I had maybe some queens in my life uh, that I couldn't maintain because I wasn't doing enough to show that I'm a true king. I can call you myself a king all I want to, but if I'm not doing sure, the sure. things that are necessary to, to be a king, to act like a king, to be worthy of the crown, then it's just hollow. It's just a hollow title. Uh, so once I started unraveling all that and understanding that these are the things that are holding me back in my life, not just my professional, but my personal life, man, I can go and get some help. So I always say that this book was my therapy. It was also my surgery that I needed to unleash and, and to, to cut out some of that so-called trauma cancer that I had deep mm. inside of me. But the therapy, the rehabilitation comes by going to mental therapy every week and talking to a counselor every week, which I do every Friday since I wrote the book. Mm. And I feel like, so one thing you mentioned, and that that's becoming a recurring theme with these man-to-man converse, -man conversations is that, you know, as a, as a man, as a black man, and as yourself being a sportscaster, I feel like just in that sports world, like the only time you cry is when you're holding a trophy. <laughs> if, you, if, if you're not holding that trophy, there's no reason to cry. Right. So, you know, for you, I feel like, yeah, that, that was like multiplied. It's like being a man, being a black man in America, being in, in the sports world and just having to chip away at that. Um, and, and, and not feeling, not feeling... Uh, 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 strong enough or or brave enough to cry in front of people. Mm. Mm. As black men, we gotta sh hide our emotions. Man, you need to man up. Man up. Uh, mm -hmm. you, yeah. You, why you should? Why you getting all emotional? Why? Why you in your yeah. feelings? Man, <laughs> we, especially, and we need the therapy more than anybody in this country, man. It's black men. You know, I'm not saying black women don't, but people need to have that type of therapy because we deal with the stuff every single day. 
but we live that life as black people. We go through racism, whether you see it or know it or not, pretty much every day. You're behind the eight ball every day because we still don't have the equality, equality that we're fighting for in this country every single day. And that messes with you. We have grown to accept and live with it, but it still doesn't make it right. And if right. whether you know it or not, it's still affecting you. So until you go and get that therapy and you're able to talk it out and feel comfortable talking it out and not being afraid to talk it out and to talk to somebody, it's going to still be inside of you and it's going to damage you. It really will. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm a firm believer in that. What do you, with therapy, with these conversations, so you wrote the book, step two, you go into therapy weekly. What are some things, are there some things you feel like you're doing on a daily basis that adds to that, that, that helps you, you know, consistently outside of that one session has you maintain and, and, and staying stable, just like all the things you're, you're talking about, racism in America, you know, being a male, d dealing with these past traumas, dealing with things we probably hold on to yeah. since we were kids. Um, yeah, what, what do you feel like you do on a daily basis to add to it? Well, first of all, every morning when I wake up, I thank God for waking me up in the morning. Uh, that's just first and foremost. I, once again, when, when I came on here, I'm alive. I'm here. It's a yeah. blessing. I have an opportunity to live my life, so why can't I live my best life? I'm going to be happy. So going to therapy has allowed me to understand that my happiness is my choice, and it's up to me, and nobody else can make me happy. So when people say, mm. oh, well, you, you look so happy with Cynthia. Yeah, I'm, I was happy before Cynthia. Or when somebody says, oh, you made Cynthia so happy. No, I didn't make Cynthia happy. I make her happier. You know what I mean? Because she was happy before she met me. She was in a good place, and so was I, and whatnot. So to answer your question, I, I thank God every single day. I meditate. And then when I feel like I'm having those moments, I pray. And I go mm. back on my therapy and the lessons that I learned in my therapy. Like I said, I'm still not where I want to be. I still make mistakes. There are things that, you know, coming along and the things that I've done in my past when it came to a, not just relationships, but in my professional life, mm. there are still things and still mistakes that, man, it might not be as egregious as they used to be, but wow. Because you weren't taught how to be a man as a child because of your upbringing, because of the people who raised you or whatnot, man, you're still basically learning some things. Oh, that's still, oh, that's still not acceptable. That's still, oh, wow, okay, all right. Okay, now let me adjust, let me try. So it's still a daily journey. And what I realized is that even though I've written a book and I go to therapy all the time, I know I'm not perfect. And I don't try yeah. and pretend to be perfect. And I don't put that out there on social media and let people know, well, I live this great life and everything is wonderful. And, and I got problems just like everybody else. And so sure. I'm, I've gotten to the point where I feel comfortable telling you, telling anybody else that, man, I have great days. Luckily, most of them are great days, but I have some bad days, too. And I need your prayers and I need your help. And I want you to help me along that journey, because if you're there for me. I, you know, I'm definitely going to be there for you regardless, but I need you to be there for me. And I need you to understand as a black man, sometimes I'm going to have a, a, a day where I'm showing my emotions, but I don't need you to ridicule me for that. I don't yeah. need you to say man up because yeah. if you can see the man up too long and you have that stuff that's deep inside of you, it's going to be man down eventually, meaning you're going to be down for good. So <laughs> yeah, yeah I, 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 every day is a process, man, but I take it one day at a time, one step at a time, knowing that I'm going to live my best life. No, I love that. I love that. And I love those. Um, I love those points you brought up that you do on a daily basis. I, I feel like, um, again, re recurring themes that I tend tend to hear are attacking mind, body, spirit in some way. So you, you definitely get, you know, mind, body, spirit um, there t touching on, on those points. And then now, you know, you're married, husband, um, girl, dad, a few times over, right? Do you, how, how many daughters do you have? Three daughters. I have two biological Three daughters, daughters, and uh, I have a daughter through marriage because, you know, Noelle is my daughter. I married that beautiful woman oh, on my shoulder, and she has a daughter, and uh, so Noelle is my daughter. So she's like the blood that runs through my body. It's almost like the blood that runs through her body as well. She has a wonderful dad, Leon, don't get me wrong. But, yeah, I have three daughters, Ashley, Kayla, and Noelle. And I love them all the same. So, yeah, and it's, and like, so that, that was a big, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm a, let, please uh, finish. That's, 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 one, that's one of the greatest titles to have. You know, I, I used to think that God was, 
had, had, a, had a, a great or a terrible sense of humor because of a lot of the things that I did in my past. Why are you going to give me all girls? Now I got to work about <laughs> all the stuff that all the guys that I used to be coming to her. But, you know, uh, being a girl dad actually kind of helped me in a sense. And I think even before writing this book, my youngest daughter went through a breakup where she got hurt. And it made mm -hmm. me kind of look at my life a little bit. It made me look at like, you know, I can't get, I'm going to get mad at this young man for doing that. But that young man used to be me. So, wow, how do we stop this cycle? How do we yeah. stop this cycle as, as men of thinking, okay, this is what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to go out there and get all these women, hoes, and all that stuff, and live this life, and, you know, party and stuff. That don't make you a man but when you grow up, and you grow up in certain environments, and that's what you're taught, that being with women equals manhood. It, you know, how do you get out of that cycle? So what do I do? How do I do? I got to be an example. And once again, I'm still growing, I'm still learning and whatnot. But at the same time, when you when you're a girl dad and you see those things, A, it's tough because you know they're gonna get hurt one day. But B, because of your past, because of the things that you've gone through, because of you know, uncles and people or other men that are around or whatever, you're able to equip them <laughs> with the information necessary to yeah. make sure that they uh, not necessarily just avoid people like I used to be, but how to navigate around that and to understand their worth as women. We as black men got to do a better job of protecting our black women and making sure that we treat them like the princesses and the queens that they deserve to be. Especially if they're acting like princesses and queens, we have got to treat them that way and respect them. I'm using my platform as much as I can uh, to, to ensure that happens. Yeah. So I want, yeah. So that's exactly what I wanted to ask, like girl dad to girl dad. I, I wanted to ask what, what, what are some of the things like that you've learned recently, again, on this journey that you pass down to your daughters that you, that you say, look, I've, I've gone through this either. You're going to go through it, but learn from it, or I don't want you to go through it. <laughs> so learn, learn from what I've learned through, but are there some things that you feel like, you've learned along the way through therapy, through writing, what have you, that, that you're now trying to instill and pass along? Well, I, I, I try not to judge the young men that might be in their lives as doing things, once again, because I don't know their background. A lot of sure. times, we don't know somebody's background. You know, so before I go off, before, you know, like I said, I'm still the guy that grew up in the hood, so sometimes you want to you know, <laughs> do some crazy things to him, but I also understand that, okay, find out about this guy. Find out what makes him tick. Was he raised right? Did, did he have a male figure in his life to teach him how to be a man and more importantly, how to treat a woman? You know, maybe I can be a mentor. Maybe I can try and help him become a better person by being an example of being somebody, once again, not being perfect, telling him about my mistakes and the things that I've done in the past and how I continue to grow into my relationship. Those are some of the things I can pass on to the, the young men that might be in their lives. But for her, obviously, the main thing is I raised you to be a queen and you got to know your worth. Me and your yeah. mom wait, raised you to be your, a queen. So know mm -hmm. your worth. Don't accept anything that is beneath you or that you don't want to have. When, as a matter of fact, what's crazy is my youngest daughter just brought uh, a young man that you know she's been seeing. And my, my youngest daughter's never been in a, in a committed relationship, a deep relationship in her life until kind of now. You know okay. So okay. she's 19 years old, and she brought him over yesterday. And this is... You know, I'm being honest, you know, this is a young man. This is the first time, you know, she, you know, she young. She was pretty virgin to college and all that type of stuff. And then I meet this guy and I'm like, what are y'all doing? What, what is this? Because you have to define what kind of ship you're in. I, I, I got that from a friend of mine. But you got to find out, are you in a relationship? Are you in a situation ship? Are you in a penetration ship? What the, you know, what, what, yeah. what, what, what kind of ship are you in? So for her, I told her, look, you know what? Don't be giving up the goods to a, a man if he ain't going to give you the things that you want in life. Just because a guy looks good, because this guy smells good, has a good job or whatever, look, you know what? Hold on. You know, you're worth way more than that. You just don't do that because you are a valuable person. And you got to understand when you're with people and you're doing that and you're not getting something in return, you're lowering your own value. So you can't have people, it's almost like a car driving off the lot and, 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 and messing up the brakes and slamming into things and then trying to return it, you can't do that. You know what I mean? Right. So know your worth and understand the people that you're going to be around are the people that 
are, are should be worthy of your time. So I'm telling her. So I asked her straight up what, what, it, what it was. And you know how people in Generation Z these days, they don't like to define things. But I told her on the yeah. road, I said, yeah. if you don't define it, how is he going to know? And he is always going to have an excuse of what he can and cannot do. So if he goes out and he starts messing with another girl, you can't get upset because you haven't defined that. No, yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you need to define exactly, and you need to tell this young man and all women out there. I'm telling all women out there, ask what are we doing? Because if this is what you, if this is not what you want, don't accept anything less than what you deserve and what you want. And if he can't give it to you, move on because you can do bad by yourself. You can do bad by yourself. We know this. I know it's a lot yep. of cliches and whatnot, but. That's the advice. I know it's easier said than done sometimes because, like, oh, he's so fine. Oh, he smells so good. He got this job. Oh, he drives a Bentley. Man, forget about all that. Right. Because right. after a year, you've wasted your time. You look back, why was I with that guy? Why am I, oh my gosh, I can't, girl, how can you tell me to leave him alone? Well, dad, how can you tell me to leave? People tell you these things. You need to understand that. Tell that man what you want. And, fellas, if you were a woman and she's doing the same thing, like, look, I, I kind of want to be in a relationship right now. If that person doesn't want to be in a relationship, they just want a penetration ship, and that's not what you want, you can't accept it. and mentally you can't accept it, you know you can't accept it, get the hell out of it. Because yeah. it's not going to work. You're going to end up hurt in the end. And so when I tell my daughters, I give it to them straight, no chaser. I mean, chase with it's no straight, no chaser, just unfiltered, just straight up. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, give it to them raw because that's the way they, 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 they need to hear it. <laughs> I've been preaching, bro. Nah, brother. Fit. Look, when you get in the zone, I run with it. But I, the new word, penetration ship. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'm noting that one, yeah. and I'm definitely noting that one for my daughter man, in the future. Man, Christian T just gave me that one, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That that sounds like a Christian Keysism. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. One other thing I want to touch on. You brought up early on with. With your with your wife being a newlywed, you said she can't make you happy. You you make yourself happy. She makes you happy. There's a there's some phrase I came across recently because you know every, everyone says, "Oh, that's my better half." Uh, this and that, but that's my better whole. <laughs> you know, preach, bro. That, that that's what it comes down to. If if, if you got a better half, then uh, you know. I hope y'all hang on to each other forever because you're codependent now. Because yeah. now, if that better, if that half leaves you, you're, you're pretty much empty. <laughs> you're exactly. Empty. Exactly. You can look at it positive, oh, I'm half full, but you're half empty. You know. So mm -hmm. when you get into a relationship, the best the best thing I've learned about relationship is to go into a relationship whole. Before you jump into another relationship, find out what it is about you that you love, and and know that you're willing to be in a relationship, not that you need. To yes. be in a relationship. Like when I get friends of mine say, Mike, I need a man. No, you don't need a man. You want a man. You Only want a man. To a point that you want a man. But when, when you say you need something, that means that I can give you somebody that's going to fulfill a need. But what happens when that person takes it away? Then you're going to be left empty. And guess what happens when you do that? It becomes a dependency that like this one thing out of maybe 10 things that you need in your life, but he provides that one thing that fulfills you and you feel makes you whole or whatever. He takes that one slice away from you. Then you're going to feel a little empty. Then you're going to want it back from that one person. He can be a terrible person. But because he provides that for you, mm -hmm. you're going to hold on to him longer than you need to because it becomes a dependency, even if he's bad for you. So don't come into a relationship saying that you need something. Get to a point where you say, you know what? I got everything I need for myself. I'm a whole person. I want to be in a relationship. So I, I, I look at that whole half thing, and, and when people say, Oh, Mike, you, you, you're lucky to have Cynthia. And, and Cynthia, she, 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 you're lucky to have Mike. No, we're not. We're blessed. Because yeah. we've done the work to get to the point so that we can have somebody like each other or whatnot. And, yes, I, I might be slightly a little bit more lucky this year, but I don't think I'm overall <laughs> lucky. You know what I mean? Because she's a beautiful person or whatever. But at the same time, it's like I don't need to be in a relationship with Cynthia. I want to be in a relationship with Cynthia. I want to be married to Cynthia. Because at the end of the day, I was happy before I met her because I got to that point of getting to my happiness. And she was happy before she met me. That's being whole. And if you can yep. be whole and equally yoked, your relationship, it can be like always be the analogy of being whole is like a, that double layer cake. 
right? So you got one layer on the bottom. It's perfectly rounded. No slices taken out. Bam. You put another perfectly rounded 360 cake on top. Bam. Everything you create is the icing. And it becomes, huh. a, delicious, it becomes a delicious cake. You know what I mean? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. No, I love that. I love that. Um, uh, but I, uh, sorry, I'm blanking. Um, cause I know, cause I wanted to make sure get to the girl dad talk, get to relationship about wholeness. Oh, so from, from wholeness and now again, it, it starts with self like we were talking about. So <clears throat> what do you feel? Cause I look, I personally, I feel like it, life is it's an ongoing journey so just you've mentioned a number of times it's not about perfection it's not about chasing perfection but it's just about being better becoming better learning more um so for me it's a lifelong journey for yourself where do you feel there's still you know i i know there's a lot more to grow for all of us but where do you feel or what do you feel are still some areas for you where you're like I can still grow substantially in this area. Or are there any? Maybe there aren't any. No, but... I mean, I'm far from perfect. I'm, you know, like, <laughs> so, and it's tough because living your life in public, uh, being married to a celebrity is tough because your every move is scrutinized, looked at, mm -hmm. then uh, bad information gets out or whatever. And it just, it just makes it hard. But, you know, luckily I'm with somebody that understands that and is willing to grow with me because once again she's not perfect either but we always say that we're not perfect but we're perfect for one another so the relationship can mm -hmm. be taken care of and we grow in that and we're willing to work at our relationship which is uh, paramount when it comes to being a committed strong love and lasting relationship is willing to work at it but growing as far as like my professional life i, I don't engage with a lot of negativity that's where I, you know i used to do that Social media, yeah. I don't read these negative comments anymore. I'll read them, but then, you know, you're human, so it stings. Don't get me wrong, but mm -hmm. you know how to move them on. You understand these person, these people that are saying these, you know, maybe they need some blessings in their lives. So I just pray for them as well. But as far as the relationships, so I gotta I'll be, I'll be honest with you. You're like, you know, it's one thing to, to, to not cheat, but it's another thing to grow out of being inappropriate in certain ways. You know, I used to be, I'm a very mm -hmm. friendly person. I used to be a person that, years ago, even if I didn't cheat or whatever, it'd be like, hey, I always felt like I needed to make people feel good. Seriously. I always made people feel like, hey, you know, blah, blah, nice. I even, even look lovely today or whatever. And you had to learn that sometimes things can be taken out of context and taken the wrong way. And when sure. you're in a committed relationship, you have to understand that sometimes you can't engage with certain people in certain manners because, you know, that can lead to a lot of confusion. It can lead to you know, disrespect at, at certain levels and whatnot. And so I had to grow into that. I had to learn that, oh, just, to, I'll, I'll give you an example. My, 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 my dad, my stepdad, uh, when I was growing up, I told you in, in the book, you'll read about the, the, the domestic violence that my mom had to go through. And I got to the point where I told my dad, I pulled a gun on him. And I said, you, you know, you'll, you'll never touch my mom again because I was going to kill him. And luckily my mom was there. And, uh, you know, she told me to put the gun down. You can read all the details in the book. But he came to me a couple of weeks ago, a, a weeks later, and he told me, he said, I'll never hit your mom again. But the problem with him is because he didn't know any better, he thought physical abuse was, uh, the, the lack of physical abuse was enough. There's right. a mental abuse and an emotional abuse that also goes and comes into play that is terrible as well. You may not see it with a black eye, but deep down inside, you're emotionally killing somebody. And he could understand. Yeah. So what I had to learn how to do is like, even if I wasn't cheating, even before Cynthia, if I wouldn't learn how to cheat, there were, I, had a, I had a girlfriend before where I wasn't cheating on her, but somebody be in my DMs and I would respond. You know what I mean? Somebody across the country and say something stupid or whatever, had no intentions of being with that person or whatever, but just because I needed to feel, feel fulfilled in a sense years ago yeah. I was yeah. as a man, and feel adequate sometimes, I needed to do that. So going through my therapy, I learned that when I, when I felt inadequate, that's when I would run to my drug. And my drug would be women or some form of woman in some kind of way, women in some kind of way to make me feel better, to make me feel whole. But now I've gotten to a point where, look, I know who I am. I know I'm whole. I don't need that to make me feel fulfilled anymore. 
Yeah, I, <laughs> man, I, I feel like a lot of what you're saying right there, I can relate to at my younger age, I feel like there's a lot of men that can relate to that as well. Again, especially black men, there, there's just something that comes along with this, you know, this swag and the swag only comes with women. Yeah, it's like, it, it's like that starts to dictate how much of a man you are. That starts to dictate your self-worth. Right. Um, I, I was guilty of that at one point in my life. It was like, if, if that wasn't there, then I wasn't man enough. And then I had to man up and I had to figure out what's the thing. And again, thank God I'm at a point where I know I've switched the man up where manning up is what you're talking about. Manning up is looking into myself. Manning up is okay. figuring out the things I need to do um, from a self-love perspective. I think even everything you've mentioned at this point, it, it comes back to self. It comes okay. back to that self-love and that use of women and and those sort of things where you were saying you need you need you, you needed a, a, a sense of validation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know for your self-worth where you need to do that for you first right you need to love you before anybody else can love you and i think that comes full circle to what what you said about being married to cynthia like if you didn't love you how are you going to love cynthia if you didn't love you how are you going to love your three young, beautiful women, like ha ha um, daughters, how, how are you going to do that? Right. And, you, really, and, you really can't give them everything that they need because you're taking, you don't have enough in yourself. So yeah. that love does start with you. And also the, knowing who you are and knowing that you're a man and knowing that you don't have to satisfy other people, uh, especially when you're trying to satisfy and make other people happy. And if that happiness of other people that you really don't know or don't matter in your life is going to make somebody that you really love sad. Mm -hmm. But as men, a lot of times we're like, man, we got a man, that, that, that woman fine as hell over here. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> you mean, and then your boys, because you might be around the wrong boys because they're taught the same way. Man, you want to go holler at that man? She right, right, right. <laughs> they didn't encourage me or whatnot. Yeah. But once yeah. again, when you get to that state of manhood when you walk into that manhood you're like man I, that that don't make me a man of being with all these women or whatever i ain't got to please my boys over there just because that woman thinks i'm fine and yeah she's fine i can admire her or whatever i can smile and say hello or whatever but i know a limit i know how far i can go can't even flirt can't even give her an idea that i want to be with her in any kind of way when you get to that point when you walk into that man manhood bro um uh, my boy Dondre Whitfield wrote the the uh, uh the, the book I don't know if you uh male versus man yeah and, male versus and, man yeah. and it, and it's and it's great because it talks about how <laughs> we're all as as boys you know you you, you, you males you you're born a male because you have a penis but just because you have a penis doesn't make you a man you got to walk into that manhood you have got to grow and earn that manhood but you know a lot of us just think because hey you know we got a penis and you're a certain age of 21 years old I'm a man now. No, I was a boy for 47 years pretending to be a man because I thought I was a man because that's the way I was taught how to be a man until writing a book and therapy and learning. And once again, I'm still learning and I'm 50 years old. I'm still learning, but I'm here to teach what I've learned to other people who haven't gotten as far as I am. I'm going to make mistakes. I made yep. mistakes. Cynthia and I talk about certain things, whatever, whatnot. Uh, but that's our relationship. That's our business or whatever. But my platform now is to try and bring as many brothers along and even people, anybody of any color along to make sure that we ensure that we are doing the right things uh, for our society, for our queens and for each other. We have to. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I totally agree. Um, <laughs> this was beautiful. I, I, I feel like, you know, a, a lot of things have been touched the right things have been touched i love having these type of conversations especially with men like you um to be able to continue these dialogues and these sort of thoughts and these ways of thinking and you know to your point i also think there is there's something to what, what you were saying with boys and 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 them egging you on I, I think on the flip there's also the there should be the notion of well why don't we start creating that new way, like this new dialogue with our boys? Let, let's, let's start, or, you know, sometimes we got to let go of those things that don't work for us. So if, if, if one of your friends from the past 
got to leave him in the past, you know? And, and a lifetime. there you go. And, and, I, and I've done that. I've cut off certain people. Negativity, I cut off. If you're making me worse or, and you're not supporting my growth, I have to cut you off. I, I can still be friendly with you, but I can't be your friend. Uh, and right. like you said, and I appreciate you having me on here. Uh, and, and thanks to Black Love, because these are the type of platforms that we need to have. We need to have more of this. Yes, it's time for ratchet stuff and all that type. But we need to have these type of dialogues where black men can come on here and black women can come on and talk about their true feelings and see how we can make each other better. We're living in yeah. a society where, you know, like the, the United States is the divided states, but we in the black community are just as divided sometimes. Yep. And we have got to find some common ground. Like I love that we're not monolithic. Don't get me wrong, because I know we think differently or whatever. But at the same time, we have got to find some common ground when it comes to at least decency, especially being a black man. You know what I mean? And and and, and not being afraid. And I, I had an argument one time with somebody, and uh, and and well, I showed some emotions one time, and I rarely show emotions, like I said before I met Cynthia. Yeah. And I I was just a, this is the time where I was about to write the book, right before I was about to write the book, and I was wondering, and we was having a conversation, and I started tearing up. And this young woman did something that I'll never forget. She, she didn't say what's wrong, everything. She went back in the house and she told her friend and she told my friend he's out there crying. And she made it seem like, you know, that was the worst thing on the face of the earth. Oh, he's crying. Like, I wasn't boohooing, but like a tear came down my eye. It, I'm like, I'm like well, I was emotional. So when you do things like that, that's what makes a man lock up. Like, I'll yeah. never show that emotion. Yep. Because that's what hurt me the first time. The first time that I ever told a woman I, I loved her. I, I got a reaction that made me lock up and internalize things and say, I'll never show that emotion again in front of her. Because we are afraid to do that because we're told by society as black men, we got to be so strong. We need to have these types of conversations and these types of platforms so that we can see strong men, real men coming on here having these conversations making us better not just yourself but making us better because when you i see a man like you doing what you're doing it makes me even more confident to do what i'm doing it makes me even more confident to pass along and they see the two of us together and a group of us together being strong mm -hmm. successful black men guess what happens we become the norm and, and, yes. and the aberration thank you, know you. beautiful yes. well said got it got it <laughs> got to continue to what what i say remove that that uh that mask of masculinity yes yes it's a stigma that we have but we we you know it's toxic masculinity you know you gotta be masculine be a man Don't no be, i i get it we're, no, gonna, no, be, no. we're <laughs> gonna be men but at yeah. the same time it's like you know look so we we have emotions too and mm -hmm. black other black men and women have to understand that we have emotions we have feelings as well yeah yeah, cool. yeah. and we do and we gotta <laughs> we gotta be heard we gotta let them out and that's why I feel yeah I feel fortunate to be able to have and create this kind of space to have this kind of conversation with you to be vulnerable to open up I've teared up on on, on previous conversations here and and other men have and I can I hope they continue to do so like yeah. I you know I don't want it to be where oh if you tear up yeah I don't care if you tear up I don't care if you ball right. that's what's needed at the time you gotta you gotta release it. Yeah. That's your body's way of saying you have got to release something that is hurting you on the inside, something that is not, that's beyond a physical pain, and it's even worse. You've got to release it. Let it go. You suppress it. You hold it in. It's just it's, it's going to do more damage than any good. So I'm not afraid. I'll cry. I'll tear up. Everything, you know, something hurt. I'll watch a movie and cry now. It's just like I right. have to let it right. go. I don't care who yeah. sees me. I don't care. I, I know who I am. You can call me whatever you want. You can call me a sissy. You can call me a motion. You can say you're in your feelings. I don't care what you call me. You're going to call me Mike as a man because I am a man yeah. and I'm a king. And even if I cry, I'm still a king. But I'm still strong. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still a strong black man. I'm stronger because I'm not afraid to cry. I'm stronger because I'm not afraid to tell other men they should not be afraid to cry. I'm stronger because I want to bring all of us together. I'm stronger because I've known, I've gotten to know who I am and I am growing. And I want to be a man. I don't want to be a boy anymore. I want to be a man. Once again, I don't want to be perfect. I'm not going to be perfect. I'm going to make mistakes. But I want to continue to grow. And I want to see other people grow along with me. And if you're with me, we can ride. If not, then, you know, I'm going to try and help you and be an example. But if not, that's on you. <laughs> Perfectly said. <laughs>
And I think I'm going to leave it at that because that was probably <laughs> the best way to end this thing. Um, I love all of this and I want to continue it. And I wish you nothing but success with your book, with your new marriage, with raising those beautiful daughters. And I want to continue this dialogue again in the future with you Anytime. along with everybody else. Um, but yeah, this has been beautiful. This has been special. I really appreciate you, Mike. I appreciate you being open, being honest here, like I said, and I want us to continue to be that example for our community. Thank you, my brother. Anytime you yes, need, sir. I'm here for you, man. Regardless, All right. just let me know. All right? Love it. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you, man. Talk soon.